I want to show you how you can quickly use the new Civil Quick Structure 7 to quickly design a structure. Okay, just click on File, click New. Then you might wish to set some defaults for the model you want to do. For instance, you can click on Set Default. And then in Set Default, you can actually control virtually so many aspects of the loading and the sizes of the elements that the software works with. For instance, I might wish to change the imposed load from a residential, which is 1.5, to an office 2.5. You can do it here, or you leave it as it is if you're working on a residential. You might wish to um, um, change the depth of the beam and the depth of the panel. Just set the defaults. But if you're okay with what we have, we can just move ahead. Now, to create a model, basically the software creates panels, which you can, by taking some actions, you can easily create the beam span and the beam and the column and the foundations just to make it much more easier for you. Okay, for a start, let me call this my ground floor. I can use all capital. Now in my ground floor, I can model the panels. I have my rectangular panel to and so many other things. Anyway, let's um, create a rectangular panel. Just click between two points. That's it. I can select it if the width is not in conformity with what I have. I can easily change the width, as you can see. Oh, I'll take it back to where it used to be, 4,000. Okay, let's assume I have like six panel arrangement, very simple structure. I can select the panel, then copy selected right. I can copy the last panel right. I can copy the selected bottom. I can click on the last, then copy it right. Or I can click copy last right. Okay, that's my six panel arrangement. I can also click to show the panel numbering. Okay, that's it. Then I can um, create my beam span, then the beam. Let me copy this floor. Call this my first floor. Okay, that's my first floor. And of course, you can see so many other things happen. The floor level changes depending on the floor height that you specified. We assume we are working with a floor height of 3150. Okay, then I can create my beam span, I can create my column. And you can see how easy it is to work with the software. You don't need to make the definitions for the beam and the column. The software border is held with it, but of course you can make your change at the end of the day. And, then also, and again, to put it up in 3D is also very simple. Just click on view, click on 3D view. That's it. It's your 3D. You don't do much about it. Okay. Let's go back and right, continue. Then let's um, create my final level. Let's call it my roof level. Just go back to modeling. I click on copy floor. Then call this my roof level. Okay. Now in this my roof level, I can set some defaults. For instance, I can assume there's no wall, no, the, the roof, of course, the I can include my roof loading, and of course, it deactivates. It makes me, uh, tells me that you can also um, include wall loading or not, but in this case, let's assume there's no wall on the roof beams. And of course, the partition, well, zero. And then, uh, of course, there is no um, slab loading, is out. Okay. And then also, you can also control the roof GK and the roof QK. And then um, I can also um, change the depth of the beam for the roof beam to be 300. Okay, that's it. Basically, I'll just change the panels to be roof panels. Okay, so that it will transfer the loadings for me without bothering about the roof loading. I can also go back, match panel properties. Da, da, da. So all the panels are all roof. Go back to modeling, I can recreate my beam span to take effect of my changes, create beam, and then append column. That's it. We have basically done our modeling. As you can see, you have the roof level, 
the roof beams, you have the slab, the first floor, and then you have the ground floor. Okay, let me now show you how you can quickly design using the software. Now, to design the model that we have is all happen in a click. Just go to Design tab, click on Load Structure for the software to do the entire loading right from the roof beam down all the way to the first floor beam and then to the ground floor columns. I can also say Analyze Structure to analyze the entire structure. I can also say Design Structure to design the entire structure. That's it. It's just that very simple. LAD, Load Analyze Design Structure. Okay, let's look at the work that has been done. If I want to detail the first floor beam, just go to first floor, I can navigate to the first floor, and then I can go click on detailing. And then um, before then, if you want to also um, create the grid and then modify the grid as you want, you can just go to tools and then click on um, create a drawing grid. You can choose whether you want numbers to be on the X axis. That is the grid numbers to be on X axis or letters, however you want. Okay, let's assume there's letters in X axis. I will say create grid. Okay, that's it. I'll just go back to detailing. Then I'll say detail beam details. So that's it. So you can see my beam detail. This is how easy it can be with the software. You can see all the floor beam is all well detailed. You don't actually have to do anything. They are all detailed and they are ready for print. You can export them as a PDF or you can print them, export them as a DSF into AutoCAD and open it from any application that understands a DSF, whether TurboCAD or any other application. That is how easy you can actually, um, I mean, load, analyze, design and detail with the software. You can see the reinforcements are all laid out, everything done without any trouble. I can also configure this page. I will call it my first floor, first floor beam details. Okay, now let's design the slab and also detail it. Go back to my floor view. I can um, click on panel one. I can just change the interior, um, the, 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 the panel edge condition. This is to adjacent edge discontinuous. Um, this is uh, one long edge discontinuous. But with panel one, of course, with the software, as you do these changes, automatically it recalculates the moments and then, of course, the reinforcements. And of course, it tells whether the deflection check is okay. And again, you can also control the reinforcements from here. Let's assume the main bars are 200. And then the distribution for the bottom bar is 250. Let me also take the same for this and this. The software has showed me that 300 is satisfactory, but it depends on the engineer. You can actually configure it the way you want the, the spacings to be. Okay. Um, I can also check this. I can see um, it's uh, the check is okay, the expression check is okay, and it's also at 300. I can also um, try to match properties, go to modify them, match panel properties. I can just use the first so that they have almost all the same reinforcement. Okay, so that's it. I've matched properties y12 at 200, y12 at 200 for distribution bars. That's it. I can tell the software to detail the floor slot. Just click on detailing and click floor slab details. It's doing the underground processing. So you can see my floor slab well detailed. The bars were called out. And of course you can manipulate quite a lot of things in the floor slab. But we're not going to that in, into that for now. Again, that's one of the things you can also do with the floor slab details. For instance, I can define some detailing rules. I can go to detailing tools. I can say, for instance, um, I don't want distribution bar for my support bar, just to make the work neater and to keep the drawing neat. And then I can also go back to detailing. Then I will say floor slab details. So you can see. The top bars are all out and your work 